Okay, so my wish for you in this program is that you are practicing these techniques. You're watching me do this, you're reading the manual, you're practicing these techniques, you're getting better at them, you're getting comfortable with them, and you are realizing that you hold the power to help people change yourself and others. You hold that power. What I'd like you to do as we get near the end of the program is to perform an intervention on somebody. Now, you don't have to think of it as anything daunting, anything uh, in which you need to uh, go in there and change their entire lives. What I really mean is that I want you to find a friend. When you first practice, practice with friends. Because if you make a mistake, they're going to understand. They're going to be okay. They're not paying you any money for what you're doing. So always practice with friends until you feel comfortable enough to bring this into your practice. Okay, so I want you to do an intervention with somebody. Find out from one of your friends something that they're having a challenge with, something they're really having a challenge with. I don't want them to pretend that they do just so you can practice this. I want you to find something that you really have a challenge with. And that holds true for all of the techniques that, uh, that I've shown you. I want you to actually work with people who have actual challenges so that you can see the power of NLP and, and realize uh, from feedback how well you're doing. Realize that not everyone's going to change, so you want to try techniques out with a, a number of people. Use techniques on a number of people. So, what are we going to do first? We're going to use the NLP meta model because we want to find out specific information from them about what's going on. And we also want to find out what resources they have, uh, how it's going to change their lives, and so forth. This, as you know from our discussion on it, is of tremendous value because it gets everything out in the open. It gets them thinking about things that they haven't thought about in relation to their goal. For example, it gets them to think about uh, other possible ways to, to do what they want to do. It gets them to think about all sorts of things. Well, then after you've got all the information from them, I want you to pick your weapon of choice. It can be something like the visual squash or the swish or the new behavior generator, etc. It doesn't matter what it is. I just want you to pick something and go with it and use that on them to alter their behavior. So the idea is that you are becoming comfortable as a practitioner. You are, after all, in the NLP practitioner program, so I want you to become comfortable as a practitioner. So you're acting as if you are taking in a patient. I want you to do it as professionally as possible. So your friends are just going to have to understand if you're dressed up that day and if you've got a clipboard that day and you're sitting and going, hmm, yes, that's very interesting. And you know, doing the things that you believe that your ideal model of a of an NLP practitioner would do, whatever that may look like to you. I want you to do that. I want you to dress the part and feel the part. And what you're going to find is that it's going to help your friend out too, because if your friend's used to drinking beer with you and, and hanging out and shooting pool and suddenly you're saying, hey, Bill, why don't we uh, why don't we do this, do a little intervention here while we're hanging out and drinking beer and playing pool? Well, it's not going to be nearly as effective as if you say, hey, you know, I've, I've gone through this program and I've learned a lot of interesting things and part of my homework is trying them out. And uh, why don't you come over Saturday at three o'clock and, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. So they come over and you're dressed up a little bit at least, and you're acting very professional and you see you're setting the stage for it. So this is going to get you into the, the routine of working with people and feeling like a professional. Now, if you're already a professional and you have an office, I want you to invite your friend over to the office and work on something with them, work on some technique after you have identified a target for the intervention, meaning some behavior that they want to change. So do that, enjoy it, and then do it again and again and again. I want you to get comfortable working with friends and helping them. And what you're going to find is suddenly that this isn't so much an academic study, this is something that's real. This is something that you've learned and you use it and wow, it's almost like magic, it actually works. 
So it doesn't work every time, but when it does work, it's uh, a striking change that happens. And then, of course, your friends are going to be after you from then on to help them stop biting their nails and stop smoking and so forth, at which point you say, wait a minute, you know, we're friends, but I'm in this as a professional. So I don't want you to get caught up in the idea of doing pro bono work, meaning for literally means for good, but for free is what the uh, connotation is. I don't want you to get caught up in doing uh, free work for your friends all the time because there is actually a line between friendship and a uh, therapist-patient relationship. So it's okay to practice on friends, but if friends want to come to you and, and pay money and get a change, I recommend you referring them out to another NLP practitioner because the the uh, what inevitably happens in a few cases is that you somehow alter the friendship you somehow alter the dynamic that you have as friends and then you become patient and therapist and friend and that's not really appropriate that's not really the way that things should the things should go so plus do you really want to know all the problems all the challenges if you will that your friends have you know, certain things you want to keep on a friendship basis and they can share with you what they want. But when you start merging all that, then then challenges can arise. So I recommend avoiding that. Friends are helpful for your practice in that you can use them for practice. You can tell them that, yes, I'm just practicing. May I use you for practice, please? And they, and they, uh, they show up and you do it that way. So that's where friends fit into this. But if they want to have an actual intervention uh, where they're paying you and so forth, uh, I recommend not doing that. And the reason I say that is because working with NLP students and working with hypnotherapy students, the first target they usually go after, friends. They go after friends and they say, hey, friend, I need to make some money. Why don't you come over to my office and we'll work on whatever problem you have. Hey, friend, you know, you really should stop smoking. Hey, friend, have you ever thought about losing weight? Well, what happens? you know what's going to happen. It's going to, be, it's going to muddy the waters and, and make it unclear whether you're the friend or the therapist, whether you want to uh, have them over so you can make money from them, and, and you become this person who seems to be always judgmental to them, looking at them as if they should stop smoking and lose weight. So when you go looking for clients, when you go looking for patients, I recommend looking in other places other than your friends.